Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and today I want to talk about the latest release of Capture One which just came out today and that is Capture One 11. So the new release which was just announced uh, is a major new version, it's a major upgrade and it contains quite a few new features um, but there's basically a couple of major things um, that are kind of the key points of this release so I want to just give you a quick run through them um, I've been using the beta of this for a little while now and uh, one of the things they talk about in the release notes is that there is a performance improvement and I have to say I have actually noticed that it does definitely feel faster than the previous version uh, which was 10 um, the other two major features are there is a new layer based system which I'll get into in a second and there's also they've added the ability to add annotations to your images um, so for example you can write notes on it with a, uh, using a stylus and you can actually export those to a Photoshop file um, so when you export your image to a Photoshop file you can save the annotations as a separate layer but in terms of everyday usage um, the kind of key features are the way they've changed what was previously the selective adjustments is now a whole new layer based system and it's quite interesting because you can now have multiple layers and each layer can have its own opacity and they've also added the kind of things that you can use on the layer so for example you now have curves on layers um, and a lot of other things that previously weren't on it you still can't do everything on a layer but you can do most stuff um, they've improved the masking tools a bit and you can also now control the opacity of each layer which is very useful as well so you can actually kind of break your adjustments down into a number of uh, steps and do them in individual layers if you want to or you can just use it as you would traditionally like for layer masking and things like that so let me just kind of give you a quick look at some of the features um, so I will start with the new layers based system um, Okay, so here we are in Capture One and I have just any old image open. It's a picture of the River Liffey here in Dublin. Um, so I can just do some basic adjustments here like I always could. So let me just bring up the shadows maybe and, you know, tweak the clarity a bit or something like that. Um, so what I can do now is I can add a new layer, which I could always do, but it used to be live in its own panel. Um, but now you will find that the layers panel sits atop um, all the other kind of adjustments so I can add a new layer and I can do now a new fill layer so what that does is creates a layer with the mask already attached to it uh, so it's like basically the mask is filled so whatever you do to the this layer will be done to the whole image which is kind of handy okay so here I have a new layer and we can do things like uh, say bring up the shadows right up so what I want to do is this is too much so I just gonna want to apply it to the leaves here so I can start by inverting the mask so and then now I just want to brush this on so I'll just select my brush tool here and I can just brush this on So there's just a quick example. Um, that's the kind of thing you could already do in Capture One, so that's nothing new there. But you can now adjust the opacity of this layer, so I can say drag this down. Um, and this is, like I said, this is a very basic example. You can do much more to this, and you can build stacks of layers. You can rename your layers, so I can call this tree, for example. Um, so let's find another image and see what we can do. So say something like this, and let's just do our basic adjustments to this first. Shadows. So we could do, say, something more creative. Uh, so let me start by adding a new layer. Now, I forgot to fill that layer, so I can just invert the mask, or I can just go fill mask. So that will be the same effect. So now I can do something like, say, I can tweak the colors using the color balance tool. So. If you want to do something a little bit more creative and you can also adjust the curves so if you wanted to create kind of like a film type look or like a 
bleach bypass or an old faded film kind of thing. Um, I know this isn't exactly that, but you kind of get the idea. So maybe something like this. So again, now that's kind of more complex adjustment. So I have done all that on the second layer. So I can turn that off or turn it back on and I can actually fade it down. And then I could mask that into various parts if I wanted to. So that just kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that you can do with the new layer options. So for the next part, let me just find another image. Let me just do some quick basic adjustments here. Okay, so for this uh, example, I'm going to look at the new annotation tools. Now, this is probably not the kind of thing that you would normally do this with. You'd probably most see it used for things like portrait retouching and stuff where you want to send notes to a retoucher. Um, but this can be useful for sending to clients and stuff as well. So let me just go over here to the metadata tab because that's where it lives. And I can select the pencil tool and I can now go... Nope. Um, So stuff like that, <laughs> I mean, that's just a rough example. So if I was to now send this to Photoshop, um, which I can do by going, so as soon as you turn that off, by the way, you lose the annotations and you can toggle it back on with this new button up here. So on off, and I can send this to Photoshop by going, so I go on edit width. <sighs> And if we go over here to metadata and we want annotations as a layer, go back here, blah, blah, blah. That's all fine. Hit edit variant. So it just gives us a second. So now we have to launch Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. And as you can see, our overlays come in and it is on a separate layer. So I can turn it off and turn it on. So again, that's just another useful feature. Um, I probably wouldn't use it that much, but I know some people have been asking for it uh, or something like that. So um, yeah you now have it okay so let me just switch back there's a few other things they kind of have uh, listed on their website as new features that's kind of stuff that i haven't really noticed or come across um for example they have they're talking about here export crop path so if you crop your image you can have that uh exported as a path and so your image will come out basically uncropped but the crop will be a clipping path which can be useful as i said it's definitely faster you can certainly notice the speed difference um at least i could anyway uh in terms of people shooting with fuji cameras i there's no major change um kind of the last major changes during the 10.1 update i think it was 10.1 anyway i can't remember the exact time but uh other than that's the the fuji conversions are still the same so kind of all the advice i have about that is still the same um so yeah that's it capture 111 um it's out now is there a major reason to upgrade from 10 uh i think the speed again you should download the trial version and see if you notice a difference on your computer um personally i definitely noticed a difference and i like the new layer workflow so i think that's kind of worth it um i upgraded this morning so Again, it's up to you. It's something you have to decide for yourself. Uh, but I will have some more tutorials and kind of explanations and stuff on Capture One over the coming weeks. And uh, I hope you found this useful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you again next time. Oh, and don't forget to check out my Patreon feed and my blog as well. Because I will have lots more features and news about Capture One and stuff there as well. Okay, thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>